Hi, welcome to Business Makers USA, brought to you by Insperity, inspiring business performance. Today, my guest is James Hudek of Alamo Beer Company. Welcome to the show, James. Thank you very much. So, we've already found out we have a lot in common, uh, and one of those is beer. Tell me about Alamo Beer Company. Well, Alamo Beer Company is the uh, largest craft brewer in the city of San Antonio. Awesome. And um, the brand has been around for about 13 years. So I want to know a little bit more about the history because you told me it goes even actually far back before you and I were even alive. Right. So the original Lone Star Brewery, which is now the San Antonio Museum of Art, had a brand that was a Vienna style lager um, from 1885 to Prohibition in 1920. And so our amber lager that we have is a style um, that, that we kind of have reinvented that was what we think was the original um, Alamo beer, oh, um, wow. beer yeah. that was brewed um, originally in San Antonio. I should also mention uh, that you're the brewmaster there. Mm -hmm. So how did you research and go about coming up with this recipe? The, the city of San Antonio and the, the library um, has a lot of historical data um, on early um, beer industry here. Mm -hmm. We didn't find any recipe sheets, but f but from what was going on in San Antonio at the time and some marketing, yeah. some photographs of some marketing that they had at the time, we could extrapolate um, and figure out what the beer um, looked like in a glass, because we have black and white photos. And, um, and probably what they were using to brew. Like what with. was available at the time. Right. Yeah. So also, you've been doing this for a while. Give me your history of brewing. When I was a high schooler, um, I got in trouble. Okay. Um, a, just a minor little, okay. inf a little infraction, but my mother has this very, very wonderful sense of humor. So for my um, like 19th birthday, she gave me a homebrew kit. And I thought that that was the best thing that's ever happened to me. So um, I'd save up my money and go down and buy homebrew supplies sure. from the local homebrew supply store. And, and then at some point I got rather good at it in college and then got my first brewing job. I was the first brewer for the first microbrewery in Austin back in 1994. Oh, wow. Called Whole Country Brewing Company. I was going to say, what was the name of that one? Mm -hmm. And then you've been all over the country, really, brewing beer. I have in Germany, too. So I do not have a degree in any of this. I have a mu music degree, a vocal performance degree, and a, and a business degree. And what I wanted to do You're was... You're unfolding like an onion right. there, James. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to go out and um, move to Chicago and lived in the, live in the big city or Houston and work behind the scenes doing uh, theater management. And that didn't work out because I got sucked in by the beer trade. And because of that background at school, I already spoke German. So it was a really easy transition for me to go to Germany and I lived for two years in Nuremberg and worked at a small microbrewery there under the castle and learned how to make traditional style German lager beer. Oh, wow. So how do you think your experience with German lagers that are more traditional than what's going on in American craft beer right now translates to your work at Alamo Beer Company? Well, I think that what's going on in the industry right now mm -hmm. actually has its roots in very traditional style recipes. So, um, you know, sour beers are actually not an invention of American brewers. Oh, gosh. Moving on actually to what Alamo Beer Company is different what mm -hmm. is it what, what do you think is different about you guys i think we're different in that we are we're one of those breweries that is kind of holding on to kind of old style old world traditions that at one time made our city you know known the world over you know i have books that you know from you know the early 20th century that talk about how great the water was here and how great the breweries were here and what we were doing in san antonio yeah so we, we kind of, we're, ho we're holding on to that brewer tradition. That's great. That's historic for here. You know, there were a lot of, there were a lot of, you know, for Houston too and Dallas, not so much in Austin, but after the Civil War ended, there were a lot of uh, immigrants that came into the state. And a lot of those immigrants, especially between San Antonio and Houston, were Germans, Czechs, and Poles. And you still, still see a lot of those family names in the communities between here and there today. And on all those um, immigrants that came into the state had this vast thirst for beer. Mm -hmm. And some of them even brought brew kettles with them. 
Um, you know, you see companies like Shiner, the, Sh the Spetzel Brewery in Shiner, Texas. You know, that, that, those, that was a brewery that was, that was put together and opened in 1911, I believe, mm -hmm. um, from a, you know, a German brewmaster that immigrated to the state. Sure, but uh, I'm just really curious of your vision as an actual brewmaster of the future of craft beer in America. I think right now we're seeing some consolidation. We've seen it in uh, bigger craft brewers getting absorbed by larger uh, beer conglomerates. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to continue to see that trend over the next couple of years. I think 2018 is going to be very, very interesting, mm -hmm. where I think you're going to see uh, a lot of the smaller uh, or actually mid-level breweries who aren't, who don't really have economies of scale right. um, to justify lowering costs, um, kind of um, either get into trouble, sell out, or go by the wayside. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more consolidation in the industry, and I think you're going to see, keep seeing more smaller brewers open their doors. And when I mean small, I'm, I mean 2,500 2, square feet, 3,000 square foot brewers who sell what we call hyper local. So they're, mm -hmm. they're making beer on site, they're selling beer on site, and then they might um, sell some beer within pretty much a walking distance from their, wow. from their brewery. Alamo is, is, is unique in that we're, we're big enough that we're already positioned in the market, especially through our um, packaged products through grocery store chains, okay. um, to br really have an impact in the market. That makes sense. While keeping our price in line and our cost down. Which brings me to the last question. What is the future of Alamo Beer Company? I think we're going to keep on growing. I think we're going to, um, I think we're going to see some different uh, products and product mixes in the, in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to see, um, without going, deviating too far away from our, you know, Alamo constitution mm -hmm. of, uh, of what we're, what we're all about. Um, but I think you're going to see more, we're going to see cans. You're going to see more a divorce, diversified portfolio. Okay. I think more brewers are going, like Alamo, are going to try to be more of a beverage company instead of just a beer company. Gotcha. And you're going to see meaning. that. Meaning that, uh, very that, that. that to uh, keep relevant in a very crowded market, that you are going to see more companies Alamo being one of them, um, probably get into more diversified types of brands, not only just beer. For example, James. For example, <laughs> I refuse to answer that question, okay. Senator, on the grounds that I might incriminate myself. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. We'll have to check in a few, you know, a few months and see uh, what these mystery beverages might be. Anytime. Yeah, it sounds like you. You're an apologize later kind of person. I am, yeah. very much so. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's why we're friends. All right. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, James. Thank you very much. Once again, this is Business Makers USA coming to you from San Antonio, Texas. I'm Amber Ambrose, and thanks for watching.